Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture about sonnet. In this presentation, we'll be learning about uh, what is a sonnet and what are the different types of sonnets and what are the criteria uh, for a poem to be qualified. It can be called as a sonnet. Okay, so let's see. So uh, sonnet is a 14 line poem which follows iambic pentameter strictly and a proper rhyme scheme. So that will make a sonnet uh, a different or a difficult form of poetry for writers to kind of like achieve because a conscious effort from the side of the poet is required to uh, get a poem to be qualified as a sonnet. So a little bit about the origin of the sonnet. It requires, as I said, it requires a great technical skill to write, therefore has challenged English poets since its introduction almost 500 years ago. So sonnet as a form of poetry originated in Italy in the 13th century. So there are like different people who are uh, called as like uh, come up with the form of sonnet, but it is usually we acknowledge the writer Petrarch, Italian writer Petrarch, to perfect or to popularize the form of sonnet in Italy. And in 1530s, Sir Thomas Wyatt and um, Surrey, uh, so Wyatt was a poet and diplomat in Henry VIII's court. He translated some of Petrarch's love sonnets and wrote a few modified sonnets of his own. So Later, King Henry VIII encouraged the poetry of courtly love and welcomed the sonnet as a poetry form in England as well. So that's how sonnet is a form of poetry borrowed from Italy, Italian uh, literature uh, and introduced to English literature. So Wyatt and Surrey are the people who are like usually we recognize as the people who introduced sonnet as a form of poetry in English literature. So there are basically two major types of sonnets, Italian or Petrarchan sonnet, English or Shakespearean sonnet. And for English sonnet, there is a variant or variety, which is Spenserian sonnet, a little difference in the uh, rhyme scheme. Because of that, it is named as Spenserian sonnet. And it was popularized by, as you all know, Edmund Spencer. From the name, it is pretty much clear. Yes. So what is Italian or Petrarchan sonnet? So basically, the difference lies in the stanzaic form. So Italian sonnet or Petrarchan sonnet is divided into two stanzas, right? So the two stanzaic forms are octave and a sestet. So if you are familiar with stanzaic forms, you know octave is an eight-line stanza and sestet is a six-line stanza. So combining the both eight line stanza and six line stanza or an octave and a sestet will get 14 line poem which we call as a Italian or Petrarchan sonnet and basically themes are usually the hopes and pains of an adoring male lover and it was introduced in early 16th century in English literature by Thomas White and the famous practitioners of Italian sonnet in English literature include John Milton, William Wordsworth and Rossetti siblings, KDG Rossetti and Christina Rossetti. So as you can see right uh, on the screen, this is an example for Italian or Petrarchan sonnet written by William Wordsworth, the famous romantic poet titled London 1802. So as you can see, the first eight lines, it introduces the theme or problem. Okay, And if you notice, you can also see the rhyme scheme is also mentioned there. R, fen, pen, bar, dar, men, again, par. So the followed rhyme scheme uh, for the octave is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, right? And it introduces the theme or problem. And the following says that it is solving the problem or generally a theme will be introduced on a general level in the octave and which will be expanded or it which if any problem is being addressed, it will be solved in the second uh, stanza, which will be assessed it. So an Italian sonnet or a Petrarchan sonnet, if we want to call a sonnet as Italian or Petrarchan, the stanzaic division should be an octave and assessed it following the rhyme scheme A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A and C, D, E, C, D, E. So th that is the kind of stanzaic form. Slight variations can be possible, but mostly this will be the rhyme scheme and stanzaic division followed by 
Italian sonnet. Okay, so just uh, to repeat, Italian sonnet or Petrarchan sonnet, it originated from Ital Italy, uh, practiced and perfected, popularized by Italian writer Petrarch. It was borrowed, this form of poetry was borrowed by Sir Thomas Wyatt and introduced in English literature in 16th century. And famous practitioners include Wordsworth, Milton, Rossetti, siblings, and Sir Thomas Wyatt himself. And uh, they follow this stanza -like form of octave combined with a sestet, uh, which will make a 14 lined poem, a sonnet. And the, the themes will usually be courtly love. And that's the form of Italian sonnet. Coming to English or Shakespearean sonnet, most of the English uh, major students are familiar with Shakespearean sonnets because maybe they are familiar with it from their school curriculum or e even in graduate degree programs, Shakespearean sonnets are uh, like a major part of the curriculum. So English or Shakespearean sonnet, uh, it, again, introduced by Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, he popularized or he changed the kind of stanza -like form and the rhyme scheme to uh, adapt to the English audience. And But it was popular, uh, popularized by William Shakespeare. And that's why the name is given as Shakespearean sonnet. Okay, So it was introduced in 16th century in English literature by Earl of Surrey, Henry Howard. And what is the stanza -like division here? Again, 14 line stanza, 14 line poem sonnet but there will be like two different stanza -like form quatrains and a couplet so quatrain is a four line stanza and couplet is a two line stanza so here we have four, three different quatrains which will make 12 lines along with a couplet and it will follow the rhyme scheme usually a b a b c d c d e f e f g g okay so as you can see, A, B, A, B will be making one quatrain, first quatrain, C, D, C, D, second quatrain, E, F, E, F, third quatrain, and concluding couplet, follow the rhyme scheme, G, G. Okay. And famous practitioners include John Dunn, William Wordsworth, John Keats, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Rossetti siblings, Christian Rossetti and D.G. Rossetti, Edwin Arlington Robinson, W.B. Yeats, Robert Frost, W.H. Auden, and Dylan Thomas. As you can see on the screen, there are like a lot of practitioners who popularized, who tried their hands on Shakespearean sonnet because this was a this was one way. Sonnet has got this like a wonderful way in which uh, writers could introduce a theme problematize, solve that problem within that 14 line. So it it shows the skill, a great technical skill and rhythmic skill and thematic skill from the side of poet. So it is it, it has always been a challenge to writers to achieve that sort of like to write a sonnet, right? So uh, Shakespearean sonnet or English sonnet, as you can see, it follows the stanza -like form of quatrain and sonnet and uh, sorry quatrain and couplet and how many quatrains are there three quatrains which will make 12 lines and it will end with a couplet which is a two line stanza so shakespearean sonnet is also known as english sonnets consists of 14 lines written in iambic pentameter so what is iambic pentameter those who are not familiar with the meter so iambic pentameter will be like unstressed syllable followed by stressed syllable and pentameter will give the idea that it is repeated five times so that will make iambic pentameter so um first quatrain second quatrain and third quatrain ends with a final couplet it's again rhyming and that's why the scheme G, G. So the end of the third quatrain, first stanza, four lines, second stanza, four lines, third stanza, four lines. And the end of that third stanza will be kind of like a twist. It will introduce or it will kind of like, it will invite the reader to kind of like conclude or to invite the reader to the solution to the problem. And that is known as Walter. And the rhyming couplet is often a summary of the poet's idea, but with a subtle change in thought. So that change in thought will be introduced by the end of the third quatrain, third stanza, which we call as a volta.
So as you can see on the screen is a sample Shakespearean sonnet, is sonnet 18, a very famous sonnet, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? And you can see the different stanza divisions ended with a couplet. So the first few lines reflect on the theme of its writings, but the last two lines or the couplet will be the conclusion. And coming to the variant within English sonnet. So remember, we have Italian sonnet, which we call as Petrarchan sonnet. English sonnet is again divided into Shakespearean and Spenserian. So Spenserian sonnet, as the name suggests itself, was popularized by the writer Edmund Spencer and is named after the Renaissance poet Edmund Spencer. So Spencer's Amority is a sequence of 89 sonnets which record a man's two-year courtship of a woman named Elizabeth. So Spencer kept the division and organization of the standard Shakespearean or English sonnet, but he changed the rhyme scheme. So that's why together like Shakespearean and Spencerian sonnets are known as English sonnets because it both of them follow the same stanza -like division. Both of them follow the three quatrains followed by a couplet stanza -like division. But the rhyme scheme is something which is varied in both the sonnets. So here what we can see, a uh, sound will repeat in the second stanza, which means A, B, A, B, C, D, sorry, A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C, D, C, D, E, E. As you can see, A, B, A, B in the first quatrain, the B sound, the rhyming sound B form is being repeated in the second quatrain and the C sound from the second quatrain is being repeated in the third quatrain and is a completely different uh, scheme for the couplet. But if you remember, Shakespearean sonnet, it was A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Okay, so there is no repetitions happening in Shakespearean sonnet. But here, one sound is being repeated. One rhyme is being repeated in the forthcoming uh, quatrain. And that variant will make Spenserian sonnet. So only difference, what you can remember is that the difference in rhyme scheme, nothing else. So the themes are also like quite common, like love, courtship. And uh, as you can see, Amorti is a what we'll come to learn in the coming slides is a sonnet cycle because it is a combination of 89 sonnets in the Spenserian format and uh, that is a sonnet cycle. So here what we can understand is that uh, the difference is only in the rhyme scheme. So here is what we call as a sonnet sequence or a sonnet cycle. So what is a sonnet sequence? It is a group of sonnets thematically unified to create a long work. Although generally, unlike the stanza, each sonnet so connected can also be read as a meaningful separate unit. So what is very unique or uh, what is very characteristic of a sonnet sequence or a sonnet cycle is that it will be a group of sonnet, which means each of these sonnets can be read as like a long work, as kind of like an epic or kind of like a, a large poem. But at the same time, if we remove each of these sonnets, we can also read it as a different, completely different. It will make sense within itself, which means a 14 line from one whole sonnet sequence will again make a meaning, which will again give an idea to the reader because each of these are different Spenserian sonnet, but together when it combined, it will be like a long work, which is uh, thematically unified. So Shakespeare's sonnets, Sidney's Astrophil and Stella, Spencer's Amority, Wordsworth's The River Dutton, D.G. Rossity's Altowise by All Light are meditations on the poet life, Altowise, and George Meredith's Modern Love talks about the theme of bitterly unhappy marriage. So it's a long theme being uh, dealt with in detail, the entire sonnet cycle or sonnet sequence. So the number can be anything, okay, 50 or 15 or 20 or so these many sonnets will be combined together. But remember, at the same time, if we remove one particular 14 line sonnet from out of the sonnet cycle, sonnet sequence, it will again give an idea or it will again make sense or it will again gives away the uh, meaning or an idea about the theme to the reader specifically. So that will make sonnet cycle or sonnet sequence. So to conclude, uh, we'll just brief about the general idea. So basically, sonnet is a 14 line poem. So what is the criteria? There is a stanza division. 
following iambic pentameter so, and a rhyme scheme, right? So the division is like this. We have Italian sonnet and English sonnet. Within Italian sonnet, that is Petrarchan sonnet completely. And Petrarchan sonnet or Italian sonnet follows the stanza division of octave and a sestet. So octave is an eight-line stanza. Sestet is a six-line stanza. So it follows a rhyme scheme specifically. And coming to English sonnet, English sonnet has two variants, Shakespearean and Spenserian, named after the person, after the writer who popularized that form. So the first one is Shakespearean sonnet. The Mostly we call Shakespearean sonnet as English sonnet. And Shakespearean sonnet follows quatrains and a couplet. So how many quatrains are there? Three quatrains, which will make 12 lines plus two lined stanza that is a couplet right and it follows the rhyme scheme of a b a b c d c d e f e f g g and what is the difference of spenserian sonnet from a shakespearean sonnet is that only difference is in the rhyme scheme because as a english sonnet as an english sonnet spenserian sonnet also follows the same stanza -like division that is three quatrains plus one couplet, 14 lines. But the rhyme scheme will be different because each of those quatrain, one rhyme will be repeated, will get repeated in the second and third quatrain, ending with EE, -E, that is a rhyme scheme of the couplet for Spenserian sonnet. And sonnet sequence or sonnet cycle is a group of sonnets. Okay, so many 14 line uh, sonnets will be making combined together in a sonnet sequence or a sonnet cycle. But the idea or the uniqueness of the sonnet sequence is that if we read the sonnet sequence completely, like together the entire thing, it will make sense. But if we remove one sonnet out of it, again, it will also make meaning. So uh, that is generally about uh, sonnet. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you.